is up guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video with your boy thick whips we are at parks detailing it's been about one week since we had the car completely ppf'd ceramic coated paint corrected all that good stuff and we're coming back here today to have the complimentary check-in wash and then just make sure that everything looks good after one week of actually using the car and making sure the ppf looks good and everything's right i definitely don't do washes the correct way all the time but he's going to help us out today understand a little more about you know what is a good method to do this so anyone at home if you're interested in how to wash your car effectively safely this is going to be a good video for you guys also remember guys if you are looking for any of the products that we use in any of these videos with parks car care i'm going to have them linked down below all the stuff that he used in the detailing video and all the stuff that we're using in the wash is available on the website check it out so Jonathan brought his car in today for his complimentary check-in wash. We do this procedure for a couple of reasons. We don't charge for it and we offer it to our customers. It gives us an opportunity to look at the car once it's been out in the wild, it's been driven. Whenever we finish a project inside the shop, we leave it inside for typically one business day, sometimes longer, depending on how custom or intricate the job was. That gives us a chance to QC the job, obviously, look over everything, make sure it's good to go. But the ultimate test is once the car has actually been driven, washed, been out in the rain, exposed to the elements. So we don't charge for this service. I recommend customers try to bring it back within one to two weeks. And what it allows us to do is we get a chance to interact with the client again. We have the whole separate side of the business, Parks Car Care, where we sell products. So. Our clients typically fall into one of two categories. They like to DIY, they wanna wash the cars themselves, they bring it to us for the PPF and the coatings, and then they are gonna maintain it from that point on out. So it gives us an opportunity to interact, show them what products they need to use. We're gonna go into that today of how to properly maintain the work that they just paid all this money to have done. What it also gives us a chance to do is check over the work. Um, no one is perfect, and we certainly aren't here as much as we try to be. So once the film has settled and it's been out in the wild, it's been driven, sometimes certain things can happen. Um, typically the moisture will dry, it goes away on its own. When the car is here during that one to two business days, if there's any air pockets, we will release those with a small insulin syringe. But sometimes when the moisture hits the sun, it will actually dry into an air pocket. And that happens once it's left our shop. It can take seven, 10 days. So when they bring it in for this check and wash, we go around any bubbles that need to be popped, we get the chance to do that. Sometimes an edge might lift a little bit. If you catch that during that first 10 days, it's super easy to fix. We can just clean it, put it back down, heat seal it, it's good to go. Versus if we do all of this great work to someone's car, it leaves for a year, and they don't get the education on how to wash it. And maybe they take it to the brush wash and that little tiny lifting edge then turns into a bigger problem 12 months down the road once it's had dirt collect under it and it's gone through a brush wash numerous times. Then at that point, we're looking at replacing a panel. So a question I get all the time during sales interactions, which is a valid question, is what's the PPF warranty? So most of the leading paint protection films in today's industry carry a 10 year manufacturer warranty. It's pretty standard now for the leading brands. And from all the manufacturers, specifically the one we carry, um, it, you know, it's gonna cover manufacturer defects. So if the film delaminates, it discolors, it cracks, it fades, it peels, any sort of odd manufacturing defects, they're gonna cover that. They'll send us material to pay for our labor and we replace the film. I've been using S-Tech now for about five years and we've done two warranty claims. Um, so it's, it's pretty uncommon, um, at least for this brand of paint protection film. Can't speak on others as far as how often people see warranty claims with those. But the question that people don't ask is, what about the craftsmanship? So by doing this check-in wash, We've done the work, we've QC'd it here in the shop, it's gone out, it's been driven, it's come back, we've washed it, we've educated the client on how to wash it, and we've also gotten to look at it to kind of give it that second round of QC that, okay, it's been driven, it's been exposed to the elements. And what I tell the customer is at that point, if anything happens down the road, whether it's peeling, anything craftsmanship related, we are very inclined to replace it, which the manufacturer is not gonna cover. They're not gonna cover you installing the film incorrectly. 
um, you know, that, that is on the shop. So I encourage anyone who's watching this video, uh, whether you live here in Charlotte or anywhere in the country, if you're shopping for PPF, that's a really good question to ask the shop. I mean, it's, it's kind of similar to getting your car painted, right? I mean, they might say, hey, look, the materials from this uh, paint manufacturer, they're covered for life. Well, that's great. I mean, that shows that the manufacturer has confidence in their materials, but what if they paint the car wrong or they prep the car wrong when they paint it? There's runs in the paint, you know, who does that land on? Probably not the manufacturer. So the purpose of this check and wash is educational. It lets us see our work again so that we know the cars that are out there on the road with our name on it, they look the way they should look. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get into it now with Jonathan's car, show you guys how to do a hand wash. So Tyler here is starting with the wheels and tires. That is the first step of any hand wash. Before you start working on the paint and the glass, you wanna do the wheels and tires first. They're always gonna be the dirtiest thing on the vehicle. And as far as all the different products that we use today, on our online store, if you go on, there's different product categories and sometimes we have multiple brands for a certain category like wheel cleaner for example i'll go over which specific brands we're using today but i encourage people who are looking online not to be overwhelmed or overthink it too much uh, when it comes to certain product categories like wheel cleaner tire dressing glass cleaner having some overlap in our online store is pretty much inevitable um, but if we carry it it's because we've tried it and we've used it and it works so Try to not get caught up too much in the granularity of, should I use this wheel cleaner or that wheel cleaner? If it's on our online store, we've used it, we've vetted it, and it works. So sometimes when it comes to choosing which products we're gonna use that particular day on someone's car, it's a little bit of just roll the dice. Uh, today we are using S-Tech Wheel on Jonathan's wheels. He ceramic coated these himself. S-Tech Wheel is safe for coated wheels. All of the wheel cleaners that we sell in our online store are. And that little mitt that he's using right there is the Clean Softy Series applicator. They call it an applicator, it comes as a two pack, but it actually works really well as a wash sponge. So we will use these on wheels for what he's doing right now, calipers, tight, hard to reach areas. When it gets saturated with water and soap or wheel cleaner, it actually has a sponge inside of it. So it's basically a mini wash pad is what it is. Uh, you'll see the wash pad that we're gonna be using on the paint and glass later. It's essentially a half size version of one of those. So um, it's soft, it will not scratch. I mean, Jonathan's wheels, I know it's like a, uh, looks like a powder coated um, sort of matte finish. So scratching is not the biggest concern, but uh, like your jet black BMW wheels, Mercedes, Audi, um, you can use it on the most delicate wheel surfaces and it will not scratch them. He is using a detail factory brush to get into the lug nuts. We are in the works of carrying this brand. We don't have it right now uh, in our online store, but we will be having it here in the near future. So pretty self-explanatory. It's a soft bristle brush that is great for getting in the intricate areas like the valve stem, the lug nut area, calipers, um, any of the hard to reach areas. The next step he's gonna perform is the wheelbarrows, which we use the Gion microfiber wheel brush. It's a great device for reaching in the barrels. It's got this little guard on the end of it there so that if you go too far in or when you get all the way extended, you're not gonna uh, hit your knuckles on the, on the spokes there. It's a nice little feature it has. And uh, both the Clean Softy series and the Gion wheel brush We've noticed that the quality of the microfiber is very high, meaning they can get absolutely trashed because you're cleaning wheels with them. And a simple pressure wash out, they're good to go. We don't really machine wash these, to be honest, because you would need to do a separate load just for wheels and um, it would get your uh, washing machine pretty rank. So the way, the general rule of thumb we have with this is we just pressure wash them out really well they're clean enough to use. And then depending on the usage, we'll, we'll replace them um, periodically, you know, once it reaches that point of its full life cycle. But uh, we do get quite a long use out of both of those products before they're ready to be replaced. The, uh, the last step for wheels and tires is gonna be the tires. There's actually no particular order. You could do the tires first, you could do the wheels first. Uh, Tyler chose to do the wheels first, nothing wrong with that. 
Uh, we have specific tire cleaner. I think today he is using American Detailer Garage F-Bomb. So this is gonna be your best bet if you're looking for a multi-use product. So F-Bomb is actually an all-purpose cleaner. It can be used on the outside or the inside of the vehicle. Uh, in this case, we're using it at a one to five dilution ratio, which is, if I'm not mistaken, the strongest dilution ratio recommended for the product. Um, that's what we use to clean tires. Probably my favorite tire cleaner is gonna be uh, Gion Tire Cleaner, um, and that comes pre-mixed. So there's no diluting. Um, it's just ready to use right out of the bottle. But if value is your focus and you want something that can do multiple things, such as clean engine bays, clean tires, clean fender liners, then ADG F-Bomb is gonna be a great, a great product. It comes in 32 ounces and a gallon. So um, obviously we clean a lot of tires here, so we tend to lean towards the F-Bomb um, because it, it's a little more practical for us. But when it comes to clients that come in and they want just something that they don't have to you know, be mixing chemicals in their garage, watering stuff down, the Gion Tire Cleaner is an A-plus product. So now that he's cleaned the wheel and tire, he's gonna pressure wash it off, get all the cleaner off. One observation that I noticed when he was cleaning the tire, typically a very dirty tire, uh, you'll see a little bit of blooming, so it's gonna like turn brown, basically, when you spray the cleaner on there and you scrub it with that, uh, one thing I forgot to mention, the Gion tire brush. It's the same shape as their leather brush, except the bristles are extremely stiff, which is what you want for cleaning tires. Um, Jonathan's tire actually didn't really change colors, so that's for a couple of reasons. One, I'm assuming you haven't driven the car very much, so yeah, it's, you know, new tire. Um, he's not driven it a lot, so there wasn't a lot of road grime, brake dust on it. And also the tire dressing that the tire dressing that we put on um, NV Onyx, it's pretty hydrophobic. So similar to like the water beading that's on your PPF right now, yeah. um, it actually has a, I mean, you could refer to it almost as like a waxing effect since it's a tire, um, but it's gonna kind of help like sheet off and beat off the cleaner itself and any dirt as well. So now that Tyler has finished the wheels and tires, at this point, if your car is pretty dirty, you're gonna want to take the, uh, pop the hood, clean the engine bay, if that is something that you choose to do. Water and soap's gonna get in the crack, so if you're doing kind of an OCD hand wash, uh, popping that hood or at least cracking it, is gonna allow the soap, you're gonna be able to rinse it out a little bit easier so that when you pull it inside or you're getting to that drying stage, you don't have like soapy water dripping out of the cracks. He is pre-rinsing the car with just water. Um, this is where it becomes a matter of like how particular do you wanna be about it. Um, obviously, we're a professional detailing shop, so we're gonna be as thorough as possible. We spent a long time doing the paint correction on Jonathan's car. So we want to put as minimal damage into the paint as possible. You can see all the dirt beating off. License plate and trunk area tends to get dirty quite quick. Same as the rocker panels, lower parts of the rear bumper, all the high impact areas where the tires are throwing up dirt. Um, but this is where it comes down to how particular do you want to be? A lot of people, would skip the rinse process, they would skip the foaming process, and they would get straight into the hand washing, which that's your prerogative. You know, it, it just kind of depends on the condition of your paint and how particular you want to be about it. In this case, obviously, we are being as careful as possible with Jonathan's car. So we're gonna do a pressure rinse with just water. And then once he's done rinsing it off with water, he is going to foam the car down with car soap. We're gonna let that dwell and what that's gonna do is pull any contamination that this rinse is not getting off, off the car. He's also gonna use that as an opportunity to take a detailing brush and go around to all the cracks and crevices. So around the roundel, the kidney grills, this vent area, uh, an area that I like to commonly hit, like door handles, um, around the mirror caps, like in here, all the areas that are pretty tough to reach with a wash mitt, uh, the door trims, areas like that while the foam is pulling contamination off the paint. So you're kind of getting 
killing two birds with one stone. While one process is doing its work, you're getting another item off your list. He has cleaned the wheels and tires. He pre-rinsed the paint with just pressurized water. And now he is foaming the car down with Envy Snow, which is a soap that can be used in the wash bucket and the foam can. And that's what we're gonna be cleaning your car with today. We also get this question a lot. That's an MTM foam cannon. We sell those on our online store as well. It's a lot of people's favorite step because it looks cool. It's also very effective on an extremely dirty car. It's gonna make the wash step a lot easier. Basically, anytime you hand wash your car, doesn't matter how careful you're being, even as careful as we're being today, you're introducing damage to the paint. I mean, no, no paint correction lasts forever, especially on a daily driven car. So all these extra precautionary steps we're taking, that's basically just extending the life of the paint correction and coating that we did on Jonathan's car in terms of introducing those fine scratches and swirls into the paint. Jonathan's car is quite clean when he brought it. So you can see there's not a whole lot of dirt that's in the foam that's running off. However, if this car was filthy, I mean, you can see a little bit, but not too much. Um, granted, if he had been doing a lot of highway driving, gone on a road trip, um, you'd see quite a bit of dirt in that runoff. gas cap area, that was an area I forgot to mention. Really good place to hit with the detail brushes. So now that he's foamed the car down and brushed out some of the more sensitive or hard to reach areas, he's gonna rinse off the soap. Again, this comes down to how particular you wanna be. There are some people who would just go straight to the hand washing. We're gonna rinse off all the soap because if you're trying to be as careful as possible, that rinse that he's doing right now, the soap that's falling off the car, that's carrying away contamination that you could potentially be rubbing into the paint. So the idea is to try and get the car as clean as possible before you begin hand washing and uh, introducing contact with the paint. So as you guys can see, there's some really awesome hydrophobic behavior going on with the paint, the glass, and that, if you looked at the first two videos of Jonathan's process, that is from the ceramic coatings that we applied to his car. If you guys watch that video, you will see that that's a pretty intensive process as far as detailing goes, depending on your experience level. Uh, it can be a pretty daunting task and it does require quite a bit of materials. You know, you need a polisher, uh, you need all the chemicals, everything else involved. So that being said, you don't have to do that to get this water beating effect. Obviously a spray sealant is not going to be as durable. It's not gonna have the scratch resistance. It's not gonna have the same environmental resistance, but I will make some recommendations later in this video and we'll put links in the description to some simple spray on wipe off 
products that you can get this same water beading. It will help making the wash the car easier. Um, and it's not gonna require days of labor like a ceramic coating will. So now that he has foamed the car down, rinsed it off, gotten all the intricate areas, he is beginning the hand washing process. I always recommend to our clients to go in straight lines. Some detailers will say that's because if you're gonna scratch the paint or inevitably when you put micro scratches in the paint, you'd rather it be in straight lines than going in circles. Um, I do believe that's true. Although the main reason why I recommend going in straight lines is it's just a little bit easier for me at least to keep track of where I have and haven't washed. So when you're going in circles like this, you'll notice sometimes you get these kind of like triangle shaped like areas that you've missed. It's just easier for me to keep track of when I make a straight line pass, then go down, you know, half an inch or an inch and then make another straight line pass. You're, you're keeping track of where you have and haven't washed. Um, obviously your wash mitt's gonna have two sides. So do a couple of passes with one side, flip it over, and then do a couple more passes with the other side. We have a wash bucket and a rinse bucket. So one is filled with soap. At this point, Tyler has been interchanging, so they both have some soapy solution in there. However, one, you wanna put your wash solution in, one you're gonna put just water in. The concept is you put your mitt in the wash pad, you make your passes. Before putting it back into the wash bucket, you're gonna put it in the rinse bucket. We have these dirt locks in here. I can show you one inside later. And that's gonna help trap the contaminants underneath the dirt lock. So they're not floating around in the bucket. They're not getting into your wash pad. So before he puts it in the wash bucket, he's putting it into his rinse bucket that has just water in it. You're gonna rub it against that dirt lock at the bottom and that's gonna make your wash pad release all the contamination in it. The idea is that you wanna get the wash pad as clean as possible again before putting it back on the paint and you're not mixing dirty water into your wash bucket. If you do it correctly, your wash solution should be nice and clear at the end. The rinse bucket should be black and brown from all the contamination that you're leaving in it. All right, so he's hand washed the car. Now he's rinsing it off. One thing I didn't mention is you really don't need to use a lot of pressure. A lot of people I see, they're like putting their upper body weight into it. You know, that is not necessary, especially on a car that's protected. The dirt and contamination is gonna release much easier. So just the weight of the mitt is all that's necessary. The harder you press down, more likely you are gonna scratch the paint. And when you're hand washing, start with the cleanest parts of the car first. Back to the wash and rinse bucket. Say you start with like the rocker panels and the bottom of the rear bumper. Well, now the chances of your wash solution being dirty are gonna be much higher than if you start with the cleaner parts of the vehicle first. Alright, so we've hand washed the car, we pulled it inside to dry it. You can do this stage outside if you don't have the luxury of having a garage to put your car into, nothing wrong with that. We like to do that here because it gives us a chance to look at the PPF a little bit closer. Our lead installer Joe and I have already looked over the film. It looks great. We might see something that we didn't catch outside, uh, but we went around, popped a couple of bubbles, heated down a couple of edges, but Everything on the install looks like it's holding up A+, plus, so we're really happy with that. Tyler is now drying the car off. He's using a Clean Korea Drying Duo. We have a few different versions of this towel. Um, don't overcomplicate it. They all work extremely effectively. It's really a preference thing. Um, some people, it comes down to color. Uh, they have a couple of different piles of the microfiber, so they can feel a little bit different. 
um, but from our testing, they all work equally as well. All right, so now that we have completed the hand washing process, we brought it inside and we dried it. Most of the scratches are gonna occur during the drying process. If you're going to cheap out on anything in your detailing experience, don't let it be your microfiber. That is the one thing that is coming in direct contact with your paint, with your interior surfaces. And if anything causes scratching, it's most likely gonna be the microfiber. We carry one brand, Clean Korea. The drying towel that we used on Jonathan's car is their newest drying towel. It's actually made out of a recycled fiber. Uh, pretty cool, but I will say to not overcomplicate things, all of their drying towels work equally effectively. So it's really a matter of preference. Some people prefer a certain color. Uh, there's different like lengths of piles, so some of them are a little bit longer than others. Just make sure you use a quality wash pad, quality drying towel. The same principle applies to the wash pads. They make a few different kinds. Really, it comes down to like color. Some of them are a little bit um, fluffier than others, but the principle still applies to all of them. It's a quality fiber that's not gonna scratch the paint. So use a good wash pad, use a good drying towel. Now that we have dried the car off, um, the next step, typically the first thing we do is we use the big drying towel to catch all the big panel, large surface areas. Then we will use a blow dryer. This is the one we sell the most of. We carry the Blow brand. They sell three different blowers, basically a small, medium, and large. Most of the detailers get the large. Uh, it's on wheels, it's got a long hose. If you're doing multiple cars or projects all day, probably your best choice. This is the one we sell the most of to consumers. It's 100 bucks, a little bit less with your discount code through Jonathan. And they're all pretty equally effective in terms of like the blowing power. So um, I think they do actually have different horsepower ratings, but I wouldn't overthink it too much. We use all three in the shop and they all three dry cars very effectively. Um, you can take the back off and periodically clean out the filter. It's a heated dryer, so the air that comes out is warm. It's gonna dry the car very quickly. So the process goes, we use the big drying towel to get most water off the car, and then we will plug this in to get all the cracks, crevices, and we actually have small drying duos that are about this size to catch the water as it comes out of the cracks. So dry the car off once, blow dry it, kind of get the drips the second time. Once you're done drying the car off, you wanna use a quick detailer. We coated Jonathan's car with NV Evo. So we are gonna use the NV quick detailer on his paint and on the PPF. Uh, concept of a quick detailer is basically to provide a layer of protection that's gonna last until your next wash. So it's not protection in and of itself, I mentioned earlier in the video, if you guys are interested in spray sealants, we will drop some links to those in the description. NV NovaJet is our highest selling product um, in terms of spray sealants, so that's the one I would recommend. It's gonna give you that hydrophobic effect, um, but even if you put that on your paint, when you wash it, you're gonna wanna top it with uh, a quick detailer. We sell a few different ones. This is the one we're using on Jonathan's car. Very simple to use, you spray it on, wipe it off. I always encourage people don't overuse our quick detailers. Um, all the different ones we sell, they're very concentrated. So if you're used to using like the store-bought brands, like things from AutoZone, O'Reilly's, uh, they tend to be watered down. So people go pretty heavy handed with them. They're kind of like dousing the whole car. If you do that with any of the quick detailers we sell, and if you drive a black car, for example, it's gonna be a lot of wiping because there's a lot of SiO2 and a lot of polymer content in those products. So less is always more with our spray sealants, our quick detailers, don't overdo it. Two to three sprays per panel is best. On a hood, maybe four or five sprays max. For the glass, it's always the last step of the process, glass and tires. Uh, S-Tech glass and Gion glass, my two favorite glass cleaners. Clean Korea Glass Shine. We have a Glass Shine and a Glass Shine HD. Either one works, it's kind of preference. One's a little bit thicker than the other, but they both work equally as well. And for the tires, we're gonna be doing NV Onyx, which we put on Jonathan's car the first time. Cool. And that's it. It's a hand wash process. 
At that point, you can go through the door jams, the interior, if you choose to do so. But today, our main focus was to wash the coating, wash the PPF, check over everything, and put some quick detailer on it. All right, guys, so that is going to wrap up today's video where we did a uh, full wash on the 340. It looks really good. They also have this beautiful white X7 in here that they're doing a full paint correction PPF on. It looks good, man. So if you guys need any of this work done, I'm gonna have a link down below for Parks Car Care, Parks Detailing. The actual products that we use will also be linked below if you guys wanna check those out. If you wanna have your car PPF detailed, um, ceramic coated, wash, anything like that, make sure you hit these guys up parks detailing here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Anyways, that is going to wrap up today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.